booming thunder radio where we groove as the spirit moves yeah drawing the honey from the rock with the righteous reverend doctor on booming thunder radio Shalom, mighty friends, fellow Hanukkah warriors of truth, liberty and justice, the wanting for everlasting in every heart, that evil would not be known by our children, and all those that would perpetuate the evil in the hearts of the children, may they receive their reward this day. Yea, their little necktie. I hope it draws up well for you and your family. And the water in your vessels, may it be holy and pure, washed in the Shavuot tears of joy at the cloven tongues of fire the living word of truth as when the spirit of truth comes upon you mighty friend yea the everlasting father revealing himself he through his son who gave his life that you might learn this day how to suffer and how to stand having done all to stand having your loins girt about with the truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having our feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. And taking our shield of faith with which we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit of truth in our hands. Yea, we go and slay the beast in our heart. Yea, removing our head that the mind of the anointed son could rest upon our shoulders. Each one of us, humbled bond servants of the one that creates all things, for the glory of the Father. Yeah, by the faithfulness of the Son. Are you a son, mighty friend? Are you a son of everlasting? Is the hope of everlasting within your heart? Yeah. Is the word of truth in your hands? Yea, has it parted its way with you? Or have you commanded the Red Sea to part before you and lead the family? Yea, all the beasts of the earth
Our brother Thea, he says, G1704 on this treasured Shavuot. Yeah, to go and walk. Ye everlasting in the earth from this day forth. The complete word study is to walk about in a place upon the earth. It's used metaphorically meaning to walk or, or live among a people. To be habitually conversant. Yeah, like we see in Deuteronomy 23 and... 14, a double portion of pie for those with eyes that can see. Since our existing Father, yea, our God, walks in the midst of our camp to deliver us and to defeat our enemies before us, therefore our camp must be holy, do you hear? And he must not see anything indecent among you, or he will turn away from you. Do you understand? Ye treasure that innocence of our children. Fight for it. For it is right. And if we cross over to H1704, that Hebrew mindset, we see it's Dibri from the tribe of Dan. Yea, Leviticus 24 and 11, the son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name and cursed. So they brought him to Moses. Now, his mother's name was Shelometh, the daughter of Dibri, there it is, H1704, of the tribe of Dan. The old brown driver, BDB definition for Dibri, is it's Hebrew for my word. It's also a Danite, a yeah, father of Shelometh in the time of the Exodus. Hallelujah. Ye mighty friends. But what what happened? They were in their minds in the secret place together right now. Yea, they were weeing together with him. And as they were speaking to the people, the priest of and the captain of the temple guard. And the Sadducees came up to Peter and John, being greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Yahushua the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day for I.T. was already 
evening. But many of those who had heard the message believed. And the number, yea, the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. And Ananias, the high priest, was there. And Caliphas and John and Alexander and all who were of high priestly descent. When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, by what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter Filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, As to how this man has been made well, Let it be known to all, ye all of you, And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahoshua HaMashiach, ye, the anointed son, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, ye, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. He is the stone, do you hear? The stone which you, yea, which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief corner stone, yea, the very tip of the pyramid. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Yehoshua HaMashiach. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But when, yea, when they had ordered them to leave the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem, and who cannot, and we cannot deny it. But so that it will not spread any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no longer to any man in his name. And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Yehoshua HaMashiach. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. 
when they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis on which to punish them on account of the people, because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. For the man was was more than forty years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed when they had had been released they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priest and elders had said to them and when they heard this they lifted their voices to god with one accord and said oh yahoshua It is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who, by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, Why did the Gentiles rage? And the peoples devise futile things. The kings of the earth took their stand. And the rulers were gathered together against the existing father and against his anointed son. In the earth, the knowable God. That only way. To know the Father is by the Son. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant, Yehoshua, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Yahoshua, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence while you extend your hand to heal And signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Yahoshua HaMashiach. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with the word of God with boldness. as we ought to speak. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the of Yahushua HaMashiach. And abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet and they would be distributed to each as any had need. Now, Joseph, a a Levite, a saffron born, birth who 
who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means son of encouragement, and who owned a tract of land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself. with his wife's full knowledge, and bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And as he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came over all who heard it. The young men got up and covered him up. And after carrying him out, they buried him. Now, there elapsed an interval of about three hours, and his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter responded to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, Yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, Why is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of Yahoshua to the test? Behold the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came Yeah, they came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who had heard of these things. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's portico. But none of the rest dared to associate with them. However, the people had them in high esteem. And all the more believers in Yahoshua, multitudes of men and women, were constantly added to their number to such an extent that they were even carried, that they even carried the sick out 
into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one of them. Also, the people from the cities in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing people who were sick or afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. But the high priest rose up, along with all his associates, that is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. They laid hands on the apostles and put them in a public jail, but during the night an angel of Yehovah, ye opened the gates of the prison. And taking them out, he said, Go, stand and speak to the people in the temple of the whole message of this life. Upon hearing this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest and his associates came, they called the council together, even all the senate of the sons of Israel, and sent orders to the prison house for them to be brought. But the officers who came did not find them in the prison, and they returned and reported back, saying, We found the prison house locked quite securely and the guards standing at the doors. But when we had opened up, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them as to what would come of this. But someone came and reported to them, The men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went along with the officers and proceeded to bring them back without violence, for they were afraid of the people that they might be stoned. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in his name, and yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Yehoshua, whom you have put to death by hanging him on a cross. He is the one whom God exalted to his right hand as a prince and a savior to grant repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. But when they heard this, They were cut to the quick and intended to kill them. But a Pharisee named, but a Pharisee named 
Gamaliel, a teacher of Torah, respected by all the people, stood up in the council and gave orders to put the men outside for a short time. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you propose to do with these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a group of about 400 men joined up with him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up, in the days of the census, and drew away some people after him. He too perished, and all those who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men, and let them alone. For if this plan or action is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. They took his advice, and after calling the apostles in, they flogged them and ordered them not to speak in the name of Yehoshua HaMashiach, and then released them. So they went on their way from the presence of the council rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. And every day, in the temple and from house to house, they kept right on teaching and preaching Yehoshua as the anointed son. Let each of us be found worthy. Yeah. Well, mighty friend, you know what time it is. HebrewPie.com Time to look for those two faithful witnesses. Scroll down to that first big block of numbers and touch on number 35 today. Hebrew Pie 35 Entitled Behind the Veils The picture of a young woman, a tender young woman on her wedding night. She's dressed in lace, yeah, the white linen covers her face. He covers her love for her king. The sum is 380. So if we look in the Hebrew definition of 380, we see that the BDB definition, there are two. The first is the pupil of the eye, and the second is the middle of the night. Yea, that is the deepest 
blackness. Do you understand? If we look at the pictographic Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew lexicon Bible, we see that H380 is 1021M. Yeah, and it's an Aleph and a Shin. Yeah. A pressing a fire or despair. The pictograph of the ox represents strength. And the book Teeth is a picture of teeth and implying pressing as one does with the teeth to chew food. Combining these pictures mean a strong pressing down, a fire, hallelujah, blazes, firmly press, pressing a wooden rod down onto a wooden board. And spinning the rod with a bow drill. Wood dust is generated from the two woods rubbing together and is heated by the friction created, creating a small ember in the dust. Small tinder is then placed on the ember and is blown, ignited the tender. Yeah, the product of fire. The pressing of wood together with a fire drill. Yeah, to produce fire through friction. burning the fiery flaming hotness a fire as well as an offering made by fire in the furnace and the coals and the press the foundation the wheat firmly pressing down the raisin cakes the dried raisins the food unable to be eaten were pressed into the cakes. This firm pressing down upon them, yeah, like the firm glory knowledge foundation, yeah, the stone once rejected by the builders is now that place of burning fire. Ye stand and press, receive the oil, or receive despair, a pressure of hopelessness in your life, for your inequity and in turning away from the truth, you will receive a strong pressing down, bringing despair and hopelessness upon you. Your charred wood, after having been burnt in the fire, a stench in the air, the black of the night, or the pupil of the eye, in the sense of charring of the fire. Ye, the apple wood, blackened like a pillar. Strong holding up the lintel. Yeah, the roof the pr 
caressing of the richness in the shine. Ye, hallelujah. The complete word study, H380, masculine noun meaning pupil or apple of the eye, which you, spotless one, are. Yea, each one of us. We only have to have a mustard seed of hope and faith and call out with a pure hands and a pure heart and he will come to you. The eye or the pupil of the eye is considered a vital part of life. The lamp or light of life. Israel is depicted lovingly and caringly as the pupil of Yahoshua's eye. Deuteronomy 32 and 10. The psalmist cries out for Yahoshua to consider him as the apple of his eye in Psalm 17 and 8. Oh, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Wisdom is to be the apple of the eye of the wise person. Witnessed in Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. And my teaching as the apple of your eye. Hallelujah. Another meaning is a masculine noun indicating the approach of darkness or time of twilight. It describes twilight as the time when harlots go forth to ply their trades. In the twilight, in the evening, in the middle of the night and in the darkness. The whores of mystery Babylon do their work, defiling all the earth. Ye mighty friend, May you receive that cloven tongue of fire. Ye, let it even. Let your hope, the size of a mustard seed, ye, bring forth the mighty Elon, the great oak, ye, with many acorns in your yard. And if you know the truth and you continue to work in equity with it against righteous men, G380, you will be rolled up and unrolled, not as a volume or a book, But in the way of our fathers who sewed the parchments together on two sticks and wrote within columns and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and he opened the book and found the place where it was written. The spirit of Yahoshua is upon each of us because Yahoshua anointed each of us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim 
release to the captives. You are free, brother. Rav, draw <laughs> and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of Yahovah. And he closed the book. And the bride came forth. unseen and such great wealth and such great poverty. But rest assured that the spirit of Elijah ye is in your heart. Ye each morning witnessing your circumcision, your piercing blade in the veils, your removing of your ego, yeah, your carnal mind, that not being so pious, high and mighty, but just a little humble bond servant, a little child of the kingdom of light, being taught by the one that creates all things. 